What is up, Hash Nation? I am back, and today we're talking about the newest Brave browser update. We're getting closer and closer to their 1.0 official release. I'm gonna walk you through some of the new features and their move over to the Chromium architecture. We're gonna go through all the details. Before we get started, I apologize for not posting as many videos lately. I am working on two huge projects and I'm buried in code. And I'm also buried in moving boxes because my girlfriend and I are moving right now. The camera is actually propped up on a bunch of moving boxes. So we'll head over to the desk for a little bit of computer action and you can see all these boxes everywhere. Oh God, there's so many boxes. Now, if you wanna follow along with this review, you can go ahead and head over to brave.com slash download dash beta and you can download for windows linux or mac and this is going to be the brave beta version and that's basically giving you all the latest features but it's not quite a stable release so if you want these newest features including the chromium base you're going to have to go ahead and get this brave beta so once you've installed brave beta you'll see this main homepage really looks just about the same as it did on the original version on a different architecture. But you'll also notice up at the top here, these buttons, all this stuff, the menu system, the extension here. So I have an, an extension installed just to show you that it exists here. The extensions, the tabs, all that stuff looks just like Chrome. You have the material design, you have all of the same sort of stuff, including the settings. You'll see it's version 0.57.6 on the Chromium base. Now you guys may be wondering why in the world Brave decided to go towards the Chromium base, which is the open source version of Google's browser technology. Now, one thing you have to note is that Chromium is not the same as Chrome. Chrome is built on top of Chromium, that's definitely true. However, Brave took the base level that Google offers, and that's the open source Chromium code, and built Brave back on top of that. And there are a few reasons why they did this, in my opinion. One, they wanted to make sure that people could use Chrome extensions on their browser. And one of the reasons why is that in crypto especially, a lot of apps rely on Chrome extensions. So it was a barrier to adoption for people not to be able to use extensions on Brave browser. So that was one reason. The second reason is that a lot of people didn't wanna to move to Brave Browser from Chrome because quite simply, people aren't used to Brave Browser. They're not used to anything but Chrome. They're used to having all that stuff in the same place. They like the look of it. They like the ease of use, the design, all that stuff. So it makes sense to try and align Brave Browser design-wise to Chrome and feel-wise to Chrome, whilst also giving you the privacy, the basic attention token integration, all the stuff you want from Brave outside of Chrome. And then finally, that integration level with different Chrome extensions and other things makes it easier for people to move from Chrome to Brave. And that's really the key, adoption is key. They've just crossed the 4 million active users mark, they're probably nearing 5 million active users per month. And for that number to continue to grow compared to the billion of active users that Chrome has, they're going to have to continue to beat Chrome at its own game and make this browser better for the day-to-day -day user. So let's go ahead and check out some of the key features that they've brought in this new version. First thing I want you to notice here is that the normal shields section, and if you haven't seen my other video about Brave Browser in detail, you can check that out in the YouTube card above. But here you can see that it's blocking two trackers on the Google homepage. And what you can do is you can customize this on every single website. So here's an example of YouTube. You can see there are 24 total blocked ads and trackers on YouTube. And that's because there are a lot of things built into YouTube that are for tracking and ads alike. But one of the benefits here is that this is all still built into the browser. It's still a privacy oriented browser, but it looks like Chrome. So that's one thing you don't have to worry about. They didn't take a step backwards and make this another tracking browser all the good things in Brave are still retained in this version, they've just built upon it and built it to compete with Chrome more directly. 
One thing that I really, really like is that they've improved the performance overall. On their website, they mentioned that there's 22% faster load time on websites using this new update. And I've definitely noticed that there's a speed increase. However, it does depend on how many ads and trackers and other things that there are on the website. So I would take that with a grain of salt, but they have made this more efficient, no doubt about it. Now, the one thing that I'm kind of bummed about is they took away one of my favorite features, which was the hover to view what's underneath each tab. That was in their old version, and I really hope they bring that back because that's something that I didn't like about Chrome. They didn't have that feature, and I hope they bring it back to Brave. Well, obviously, an important factor here is Chrome extensions. You can see I have the Adobe PDF file extension here. You can now install Google Chrome extensions onto Brave because it's based on the Chromium architecture. This is important because if you have a Ledger Nano S or some of the other devices out there in the crypto space that require Chrome extensions in some form or fashion, or they are slowly but surely moving away from them, you still want to be able to use them on your browser. So now on Brave, you can. One of the other really important features here is Tor browsing. And for those of you who don't know what Tor browsing is, essentially it is a next level version of incognito browsing. In this case, you can hide your IP address and other identifiable information from your internet service provider, your employer, your network administrator, so on and so forth. It's true private browsing for the most part. This feature is in beta. However, it is great to see that this has now been created and implemented in Brave. And you can see shields and rewards are grayed out on this Tor browsing feature because you are not tracked in any way, shape, or form. And now let's briefly talk about Brave rewards. I would like to share with you that you can indeed get a token grant of 25 basic attention tokens, which is equivalent of $8.50 in order to try it out in the beta version. So here you'll see, these are some of the sites that I've visited since I downloaded this new Brave. You can see my name here, Hishoshi on YouTube is 2%. Let's go ahead and check out my other Brave browser review and just give it a little bit of a watch and just uh, kind of hang out here. You'll see we're on this rewards page and it's C and you'll see here, Hishoshi on YouTube, Brave verified publisher. So. You can see that you could send a tip here. So you could say, oh, okay, I really like this video. I'm gonna send a basic attention token over to Hashoshi. And you can make that monthly. You can do all sorts of cool stuff. So if you're really liking content on YouTube, you can check in Brave to see if this person's a verified publisher on Brave. And now what's really cool is we've spent some time on this page now. So if we refresh, our rewards page, you'll see now 9% of my attention has gone towards Hashoshi on YouTube. And if I wanted to, I can change my settings to pay monthly to that those creators based on the percentage I have watched. Now, one of the key things I recommend you do is uncheck allow contribution to non-verified sites. That ensures that you're only contributing to people who are part of the Brave ecosystem. That helps, in my opinion, encourage people to join up and use Brave. Now you can also set how many visits a publisher must get from you to be relevant and how long it takes to register as a visit. These different things, fantastic. And you know what, shameless plug, if you wanted to donate some basic attention tokens to me because you like my content, that would be much appreciated, but obviously no pressure. Question of the day. Let me know what you think about Brave Browser's latest update to the Chromium architecture. Let me know if you like it, you hate it, or you don't really care in the YouTube poll above. So there are a lot of things about this new Brave update that really excite me. And obviously their implementation of a Chrome based browser scared some people, but I can assure you that there aren't any trackers or Google bugs within this browser. This is Brave browser just built to be more user friendly and a much cleaner user interface. Now, the things that I really don't like are few but definitely important. I'm definitely bummed they got rid of the tab hover thing, but first and foremost, one of the things I really don't like is that this is still a very inefficient browser. Like Chrome, it's very RAM hungry. It eats up a lot of resources on your computer and it frankly takes too long to boot up still. And I hope that Brave will work on that in the future to make this more efficient, but who knows how much more efficient they can possibly make it. The other thing that I'm really bummed about is that Brave Rewards 
is still not fully live. I really wish I could have shown you guys the ads capability where you can really square up that Brave Rewards ecosystem where you can watch ads, receive based attention tokens to then give to your favorite creators and online content providers. However, that's still in progress and I really hope that they get that done soon. And if you guys watched my other video, I must say one of my favorite things about them rebasing onto Chrome is that now they have amazing developer tools just like Google Chrome. So now I have no reservations about using daily Brave browser because I can use this as my main development browser for all of my web needs. And guys, I really hope that you will check out more of my content, but also I did create a bunch of stickers with my logo on them. They are, uh, they're pretty dope in my opinion, and they're pretty durable little stickers. So if you want one, I'm giving them away for free to five or six lucky commenters on my video every single time I post. So if you want to win one or two of these stickers, all you have to do is comment below let me know what you think of this video. Let me know what you think about Brave or just say, I want some stickers. I'm gonna pick five to six random people every single time I post a video and give you some free stickers. So don't forget to comment below and smash that subscribe button if you would not mind.